Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today with Veeam, which is called Break Free from Legacy Office 365 Backup. Today, I'm joined by Edward Watson, Product Marketing Manager at Veeam, and Karim Bissett, Technologist with Product Strategy. I'm also joined by Joe Hepburn, who is our Data Management Specialist here at Bytes. So with that, I'm just going to pass over to Joe, who's just going to go through the agenda and provide a little bit of an intro. Thanks, Daniel. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining today. Uh, my name is Joe Hepburn. I'm a data management specialist here at Bytes. Uh, we tend to look after any technologies that sit in the, the backup disaster recovery governance and analytics space. Um, we have an agnostic approach to how we sell and position those products. Uh, Veeam is absolutely a best of breed technology that we see both for cloud-based backups and Office 365 backups, which is a hugely growing market. Uh, Bytes is Microsoft's largest partner in the UK. We have a 40% market share in Azure, 4 million Office 365 sold seats and 2 million deployed. There's a lot of collaboration between the Veeam and Microsoft team uh, as a Bytes reseller. Um, and from that perspective, uh, we, we see it as a real kind of key partnership. Just moving on to the agenda for today, we're going to give you an overview of Veeam Backup for Office 365 and its features, why Office 365 Backup for remote users, benefits and features, and how it works with a bit of a demo of the service. At the end of the presentation, will give you, uh, as a call to action, a free trial offer for Veeam Backup for Office 365. And with that, I'll hand over to Corinne and Edward to proceed. Great, thank you very much. Um, yeah, just bear with us as we transition here. So yes, my name's Edward Watson, Product Marketing Manager at Veeam. Very happy to be here with, uh, with Bytes today, and I'm joined by my colleague, Corinne. Say hello, Corinne. Hi, my name is Karim Bissett. I'm a technologist here at uh, Veeam under the product strategy side. Okay, and we have a really great agenda today for breaking free from legacy Office 365 backup. Uh, we're actually going to dive straight into really what we're seeing today um, in the market, um, which is, is quite uh, astounding, right? So what we're currently seeing is this remote transition, right, that many of us are going through. Uh, the majority of our workforces have gone remote for for many of us, and with that comes um, you know a lot of uh, uncertainty with the times. But there's also a lot of innovation, right? So what we're seeing is uh, you know just mass adoption of things like Microsoft Teams, a lot of the Office 365 uh, productivity tools. Um, in fact, 12 million uh, in one week alone. So we we do know that. Uh, you know, this transition, uh, there's obviously uh, un uncertainty and uh, quite a bit of fear among, you know, uh, with this th this time period. But again, there is this massive adoption and this willingness to embrace change that makes um, the IT community uh, so strong and um, so willing to change with the times. Um, 44 million Microsoft Teams active users to date. Again, great momentum um, with these Office 365 cloud-based productivity tools. Um, so now we want to kind of, along with that remote transition comes more risk, right? An increased risk. And uh, Corinne's actually going to take us through what these risk factors are that we need to look out for. Yeah, uh, this massive move and this transition to the Microsoft Office 365, it was going to happen eventually, but it's happening at a much faster rate than what most companies expected to have to plan for. And a lot of these companies didn't plan through all of the caveats that you might run into, like all of the remote devices that this data is going to be accessed from. These remote devices are all types of platforms. They're on your phone, your laptop, it's on a Mac, it's on a Windows, someone's got it on a Linux machine, opening it up through a browser. And all of these machines, you're not responsible as a company to patch your end user's machine when it's not a device owned by your network meaning it's outside of your GPO policies. So these devices could be missing critical security patches and be vulnerable or already have some type of malware on it just from everyday usage. Uh, and then even looking at a home router, 
I don't know many uh, home users that have a properly configured physical firewall like you might find in an office building with an optimal security setting um, just because that's not the knowledge level of your everyday home user. And to kind of show here, public Wi-Fi is just a breeding ground. So if your remote user may not have Wi-Fi or internet at home or not a fast enough internet connection at home, they may be reaching out to these public Wi-Fi sectors so that they can get access to the internet but aren't knowledgeable enough to know that they need to be on a VPN access before typing in any types of credentials into these components. And that just opens up credentials to be stolen, data to be sniffed, and um, just expecting what's coming in the future. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we do have the existing environment risk factors, but in addition to those risk factors, um, there are some specific reasons as to why you need an Office 365 backup, right? So we have many customers that say, you know, I, I've been I've been working with Veeam for a while, um, why do I actually need to back up this Office 365 data that I thought was protected or uh, thought was already available? So first on the list, accidental deletion, right? Um, I've deleted stuff, you've deleted stuff, uh, Corinne, Corinne's never deleted anything, but um, <laughs> we've all deleted things and, you know, it's not so much that deletion that um, you as the admin are responsible for. It's not so much um, the deletion that we should be worried about. It's more about what happens after that deletion has taken place. So accidents happen, but am I able to restore that data once it's gone? Once that has been deleted, am I able to get it back? So again, accidents happen, but the, the real question we should be asking is, can we get it back? Uh, and that all boils down to the retention policy gaps. There's a lot of confusion around these gaps. So we're actually gonna go into and dive into the uh, retention policies that come out of the box in Office, on, in Office 365. Um, many people think they're protected when they're not. So depending on whether you're inside the, the window that Microsoft safeguards or whether you're outside it, uh, you may actually not be protected. Um, internal security threats, right? So uh, those are sometimes the ones that are right under our noses, right? So those might, there might be uh, employees that want to actually do our business harm or maybe departing employees that want to cause a little bit of havoc, maybe um, cause a bit of data loss before they go. Um, sometimes it's completely innocent. So we know that sometimes, um, you know, a, a salesperson before they leave, just, just, you know, by the way that they've been trained, they just simply delete everything before they leave. And uh, we know that that can cause um, quite a bit of um, quite a bit quite a bit of havoc to try to get back. External security threats, right? Those are the ones we always hear about in the news. Um, the the ransomwares of the world uh, that we we really don't want to to happen to us. But uh, you know, definitely you need to make sure that your Office 365 data is protected from those those really um, those really bad threats. Uh, legal and compliance requirements. So many of us on the call today may have some form of uh, compliance they have to adhere to, right? We know uh, the compliance is only going to increase, right? The momentum around things like GDPR, um, uh, those evolving, um, expanding compliance needs, really, when it comes down to it, it's all about control. Do I have the ability to uh, find that needle in a haystack uh, beyond the existing capabilities that Office 365 provides? Am I able to get really granular, restore that data, um, perform e-discovery, um, bring that data back in the form that my business requires me to 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 bring it back in. So we're going to dive into to, uh, those e-discovery options as well that we have, as well as you know we know everyone uh, or the majority of the people today on the call might have some form of on-prem exchange and Office 365 hybrid environment, and that only adds to the complexity, right, of needing to streamline uh, protection policies to make sure that that ultimately there's there's protection in place. So again, um, whenever that question comes in mind, we'll reference back these six reasons uh, to make sure that uh, you fully understand why uh, you need to back up that data. So moving on. Um, how often do these reasons happen, right? So um, oftentimes, uh, you know, we get this question and we actually asked this question to our Veeam customer base. Uh, late last year, we asked the question, what forms of data loss have you experienced within the cloud? Um, by far and away, the majority had user error accidental deletion as uh, the primary cause of that data loss in the cloud. 
And then things like security threats, things like retention policy gaps, thinking something was protected when it wasn't, um, actually came up as well. So these reasons really do happen. Um, these aren't reasons that we, uh, we're, we're simply guessing or, or throwing out reasons. These, these actually do happen uh, and are real concerns for organizations. Um, in addition, um, a third party organization analyst firm, IDC, uh, came out with some data that says that six out of 10 organizations are still unprotected. Things like Office 365 backup, recoverability, um, search capabilities, and compliance are simply an afterthought, which is um, is quite a um, quite a scary stat, right? So if you are one of the six out of 10 organizations on the line today, um, hopefully this is the first step with this presentation. Hopefully this is you taking the first step to really truly wrapping your head around this market, um, this Office 365 backup uh, capability that you should be adopting, you should be thinking about. Um, in order to protect yourself. So we get this question, why do we need a backup? This is probably the most uh, popular question. We've gone over the reasons, right? So there are some key reasons, but what it comes down to is responsibility, right? So the customer perception, maybe your perception, is that Microsoft takes care of everything, right? Um, we moved to the cloud, uh, we thought the infrastructure was protected, that uh, the data is taken care of, that everything's completely up there and I, I don't have up there in the cloud, I don't have to do anything to it. Um, but your, your, your cloud environment is no different than your on-prem environment, uh, which you also backed up, right? Um, so ultimately, the reality of the situation is that the infrastructure and the uptime of that infrastructure is all on Microsoft's sh shoulders, right? So when it comes to keeping the lights on, keeping a redundant system, um, you know, that's all on Microsoft, but the data is actually your responsibility. And we're gonna break this down um, in the next few slides in the shared responsibility model, which is actually a framework that Microsoft provides uh, in order for, for you as the organization to understand your responsibility within this. So uh, Corinne's actually going to take us, us through the shared responsibility model. Yeah, so the Microsoft Office uh, shared responsibility model is a chart developed by Microsoft to let a customer know for each of their cloud offerings what you're responsible for and what Microsoft is responsible for. In this case, Office 365 is going to be considered a software as a service. And in their software as a service offering, they are responsible for the redundancy of your data, your update zones, your fault tolerance zones they are there to make sure you have access to that data. They do have a limited recycling bin on that data as well in geo redundancy, but the integrity and allowing users access to the data is all on the responsibility of the user. So whoever owns the roles, your administrators, uh, keeping your credentials away from ransomware attacks that can infect that data, that type of security is on the user as to where Microsoft makes sure that the underlying hardware and physical security layers are all protected. Now to kind of dig... Um, yeah, so without, ultimately, oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Ultimately, without a backup of that data, right? So we, we've talked about the talked through the reasons, we've talked through the responsibility, right? Um, so ultimately, without a backup, um, there are these four, four risk factors, right? So to kind of tie up the shared responsibility model, um, it's all it all boils down to control. And without that control over that data, you're not going to be able to find that needle in a haystack. You're not going to be able to protect yourself against things like regulatory exposure, um, security vulnerabilities. And again, you may fall uh, prey to those retention policy gaps. So um, we're actually excited to show you the retention policies and kind of kind of dig a layer deeper um, into to what's under the covers here for Office 365 retention. Taking a look at the retention policy here, this is what Microsoft Office 365 offers. And this is the recycling bin type of technology we're talking about. Microsoft has what is called a soft delete cycle and a hard delete cycle. Within the soft delete cycle, it goes to a holding cell for you to be able to uh, initiate and try to recover that data. Once it hits hard delete, they are no longer responsible for being able to provide that back to you. 
a lot of the time, uh, or a lot of their offerings, they allow you to configure up to a 30-day retention window. But by default, all of these windows are generally set to seven days. Meaning if it's more than seven days, uh, since you've noticed that you've deleted an item and you need to be able to recover that item, it's no longer available. And what we found in the industry, the average length of time before or between deletion and when someone realizes data is missing is about 140 days, which is well past that deletion cycle. And that includes employees that leave the company. So if you have an employee that leaves the company and say 60 or 90 days later comes back with any type of lawsuit or your company is hit with a lawsuit because of that employee and you need to provide that type of data from their contracts to their email transactions. It could even be, say, a harassment charge. If you don't have that data to dispute, then a lot of these court cases are gonna be really hard to prove uh, in your environment. And that's where Veeam kind of steps into the role to make sure that you have that retention period, that you're not worried about legal reasons coming back. You're not worried about uh, compliance and regulatory reasons. And uh, we actually have a quote here from that. Yeah, we actually, we have a quote here from a third party um, analyst here, Archana Venkatraman, who is an associate research director at IEC. And she she really, her opinion is very much in line with ours, with which is that without data protection, uh, extended to 0365, um, there are those risks, right? There's the compliance issues, the data loss concerns, uh, maybe even security and business continuity risks. So especially for E3 and E5 licenses, I, I really like this quote because we get this question quite often. Um, if I have an E3 or E5 license, doesn't that mean that I don't need a backup, right? Um, but that's simply not the case. Um, so uh, I'm sure we'll get some questions here today on on things like litigation hold and, and maybe unlimited archive. But ultimately, uh, regardless of what, whether it's E1, E3, E5 licenses, it's it's all the same objective, which is making sure that that data has um, the protection it needs uh, from all of the risk factors that we've we've covered thus far. Okay, now we're going to dive into the the product itself. So this is the long-awaited. Uh, we've we've kind of gone through all the reasons why you need a backup, and now here's actually uh, a solution that addresses that problem. So Veeam Backup for Microsoft Office 365, and um, when it comes to Veeam Backup for Office 365, it's all about eliminating the risk of losing access to that data. So whether you have Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, um, whether it's OneDrive for Business or even Teams. Um, what we allow is you to to back up to any location. So um, we're going to focus on Azure very, uh, today, um, but uh, whether it's on premises or whether it's uh, cloud object storage, right? So you have um, any which way that that you can uh, you can store that data, uh, protect it from all of the risk factors we covered. Um, you know, but a backup is is uh, one thing, but you of course need a restore. A backup's nothing without the restore capabilities, and we're going to cover. Um, all of the restore capabilities that we have that really enable your business to restore and, and find and, and deliver the data the, the ways that uh, it needs to. Um, and of course, meeting, helping meet those legal and compliance requirements is something that, uh, that you, can, you can do. Truly find that needle in a haystack here with, with uh, Veeam Backup for Office 365. We and also have a community edition. Go, uh, feel free to take us through that community edition, Corinne. So Veeam Backup for Microsoft Office 365, like a lot of our products that we offer, we give the community editions. Now these community editions allow a limited number of license, but have mostly unlocked features, meaning that you can back up as much or all of users' content for up to 10 users for this edition of Veeam Backup for Microsoft Office 365 forever. You don't have to worry about the it expiring, upgrading. You're able to use this product completely for free for up to 10 users or less.
Uh, also, we'd like to just take you through an Office 365 backup solution checklist. So as you're sort of researching Office 365 backup solutions, really looking to, uh, to, to get involved in, in protecting this data, um, we've set up these checklists so that, you know, similar to as if you were buying a vehicle, you look for certain features and functionality. Um, this is also what you should look for in an Office 365 backup solution um, from, a, from a more simpler point of view. But um, ultimately, feature set has to be rich, right? Has to back up everything in your Office 365 environment, um, including Teams, um, give you solid restore capabilities. So again, we're gonna cover those restore capabilities. Flexibility and choice, whether you're deploying in Azure, right? Deploying on-premises, um, leveraging the storage target you truly want to, to leverage. So well, why is flexibility so important, do you think, Corinne? I'd say because the environment's always changing. What makes sense for your business today to send your data to may not make sense for the future and where you want to migrate your data to. And we offer a zero lock-in, meaning if you decide that you want uh, AWS today, but Azure is offering a better blob storage for the price at that time, you're able to seamlessly migrate over your data and start using it uh, immediately. Right, and a partner like Bytes can make that very easily, right, that transition. So that's that's definitely uh, something to look into. Innovation is very important as well, right? So keeping things simple, uh, keeping things powerful, uh, implementing customer feedback is something we definitely take pride in as well. Uh, in fact, we've come out with the past few really big uh, feature sets uh, simply by um, customers, customer demand. So um, scale is very important too, whether you have a, you know, a, a smaller set of users, maybe you have only 200 users in your organization. Uh, maybe you're into the mid enterprise where you're at maybe 10,000 users. Um, so what, what's the importance of backup proxies to this scalability, um, Corinne? Backup proxies are essentially our scale. Uh, they allow you to have as many or as few proxies in your environment as is necessary for your business, meaning you don't have to have a large infrastructure or a large machine just to back up your small SMB uh, environment. Or if you do have a huge explosion of your company and you're hiring employees, you may have acquired another uh, business in the market and you need to scale that out, it's as easy as adding another Windows machine and attaching a repository to be able to expand that business for you. Right, right, definitely a good thing to keep in mind. Integrations are incredibly uh, important as well. Uh, we've got um, many different integrations with hyperscale clouds. And lastly, the breadth of service. So we know that Office 365 um, is not the only uh, workload in your environment, right? So you might have uh, virtual machines, you might have physical servers you have to deal with. You may even have um, other workloads running in, in the cloud as well. So we know that, um, you know, most organizations are not are not uh, only dealing with one workload, they're dealing with multiple different types of data sets. So um, with the Veeam Availability Platform, we really offer that, that full breadth of service um, beyond just Office 365. So um, again, use this checklist as you're, as you're digging into different uh, companies and evaluating. Um, and, of, and of course, we, we hope you choose Veeam and Bytes, uh, of course. But um, uh, you know, whatever you decide, um, hopefully this is very helpful for you. Yeah, and I think we have a couple valid questions here that were asked. Uh, yeah. Do we support archival email as well? Yes, we are able to back up archival email. Uh, and then we were asked about what kind of storage do we support? Uh, we offer the ability to use an on-premises in storage, like a Direct Connect, a disk on your machine, or you can send up to several different types of object storage. Uh, we are S3 compatible for that. And the advantage of backup proxies is to be able to scale out your infrastructure and load balance that load, depending on where you want to put those data movers. Okay, good questions. Please keep the questions coming in, guys. We, we really appreciate that. Um, we've I think got the next question to be for you. Okay. How yeah. is it licensed? Yes, yeah, great question, Darren. Um, we're actually licensed on a per user per month basis. Um, so we're very much aligned with um, Microsoft's pricing. So starting at $1.50 per user per month. And of course, there are discounts available between the three and five year um, uh, commitment mark. So uh, 
yeah, we're very much aligned uh, with the Microsoft pricing as far as that goes. So that really helps streamline streamline the, the user count. Okay, good questions, guys. Please keep them coming in. Um, feel free to go over our restore options here, Corinne. We're pretty proud of these. Yeah, if you're familiar with any of the Veeam backup and replication products, you're probably familiar with our explorers. Our explorers were built around the idea that we're not just backing up raw data, we are backing up applications, which need to have explorers that can read that data in a format that makes sense to that application. The best example from here is the Exchange Online and Exchange On-Premises. We allow you to export files if you want to not restore them back to the original location or new location as a PST file or an MSG file, which are the native types of formats for the Exchange software itself. And within these three explorers, we offer 25 different ways that you can restore that data in a way that makes sense to your environment and in a way that you want. So it's not just, again, restoring back to the original location, a new location, but you can export this anywhere that you need that data. Yeah, great point, Corinne. And those those 25, what you're probably asking yourself, why do I need 25 different ways to restore, right? Um, but ultimately, it's doing what's right for your business, um, giving you all the options that you might need uh, in order to be successful. Um, we mentioned customer feedback is very important to us. So in the last release, uh, version uh, 4, we actually did release uh, object storage support. Right, so we are going to go into Azure Blob. Uh, you can actually deploy directly in Azure Blob, um, but uh, we see a lot of people uh, simply wanting to to uh, leverage things like the reduced costs, uh, leverage the, the scalability that uh, this storage has to offer, um, as well as simplifying the deployment. So uh, again, we're gonna we're gonna take you through a demo today, and uh, yeah, we're we're excited. It's going to be a live, dangerous demo. So we're gonna hope the demo gods are with us today. That's for sure. So just a little bit on how the software works as a whole. So from the Veeam Backup, uh, Veeam Backup for Microsoft Office 365 console, we're able to back up not only your Office 365 environment or just your on-premises environment, but even if you have a hybrid environment, you don't need additional consoles. You're able to do it from the same window. And we are, moving off to either an on-premises environment, whether it's your local storage or you're moving off to the object storage in the cloud. And the object storage in the cloud, we're compatible with Amazon S3, Microsoft Azure Blob, IBM Cloud, and just generic S3 compatible storage types. We do offer an additional storage type for infrequent access for Amazon S3, but all other storage types that we support currently are active storage types. And again, just to reiterate how flexible we are with our restore process and our three explorers that we offer to this uh, software, you can even send an email containing the data that you wanted to restore to yourself, or if you had a request coming through like a ticket system to send that back to that user. You could save it, you can export it, you can do a self-service uh, types of restores if you have a service provider involved. There is a very flexible component to this software. And before we uh, head over to our demo, do we wanna uh, clean up some of the questions here in the chat? Yeah, sure, let's, let's go through them. So, um, I think there was a follow-up question on licensing here. The licensing, uh, the licensing model is is that based on active users? So this is based on a per user per month. Um, hopefully that that clears up that question. Um, uh, let's see what S3 storage class can be used. Just the S3 standard live access storage class or S3 Glacier? I think we uh, answered that one on the last slide. It has to be an active storage class unless you're looking at the specifically the Amazon storage, which we're able to offer the infrequent access for right now. Okay, yeah. Um, does it support deduplication while backing up? There is no deduplication because these are live or 
live active database types of backups. So think of like if you have an exchange backup or an exchange database, those databases are not compressed or deduplicated. Okay, got a question here. Do you need to install Veeam on every PC that uses Office 365? No, we back up directly from the Office 365 uh, through the EWS service and the SCOM SharePoint online. So everything's backed up through Microsoft itself, meaning that you don't need agents on your individual machines. Okay. Yes, that would be hectic to install on every single PC, wouldn't it? Um, any user backup size limits? Uh, there's no limits that we've run into. There are limits on some Microsoft licensing that you should uh, check with your Microsoft representative to make sure you don't reach those. Okay, great. Um, I think that wraps up the questions, Corinne, if, if uh, you want to dive into the demo here. Time to take it over to the console. All so right. So we'll go ahead and it's going to make me refresh. All right, so this is the Veeam uh, backup for Microsoft Office 365 console. It's as simple as adding in your organization and then coming down to your backup infrastructure. In this case, we're going to add in an Azure blob storage and I've already authenticated that blob storage. So we're just going to add a repository to see how easy this is. And this local data path is going to be something on site that is a metadata for the backups being sent up to the cloud environment so that restores are faster and so are incremental backups to know what's already in your cloud to what's going to your cloud. And then you can just select offload backups to object storage. These are still a direct backup to object storage. And I always recommend encrypting your backup because you're sending these off-site to an additional data source. You're able to select your retention all the way down to the number of days if you choose uh, and when you would like that policy to be met. And that is all you need to do to add a blob storage into your account and start creating jobs to go to that storage. So just to take a run through of that uh, storage and we're gonna back up to the blog you can either add users groups sites and your entire organization and scope down based on each of those uh, categories uh, you have different departments say IT or finance or um, any of those departments that you want to separate off building so you don't have to keep track of their costs in the object storage to try to separately build those departments it makes it easy to select and then you can even granularly select if you want email onedrive sites or anything of that nature and we're not going to do any exclusions in this case but you have the same granularity if you want to exclude we'll select the blob storage You'll define your schedule. If you do a periodic backup that is under a lower SLA than how long it takes you to do your backup originally, then you're going to be able to get a continuous type of backup as well. So it all depends on how often that you want uh, data to be generated. And we'll hit create. And that is it. We can start that job off and let it continue just to stress how easy it is for data to become inaccessible from uh, your on-premises environment. I've mapped a OneDrive locally, which makes it so easy to transfer files back and forth and take a look at any type of um, reporting or content data or uh, project for improvement plans. And right here is a script to see how fast all of this data can just become invalid. And if you see the modify dates, these modify dates have already changed. And down here, this nice little icon that keeps all of your machines up to date and accessible is already done syncing that data. And even if I come over here online, to try to see if I can still access that file because I need that performance improvement file. 
these were all just updated a second ago, meaning that they're no longer uh, readable. I can't get to this file, it's done. But luckily, we were doing a backup of that software and we can take a look at those explorers. We'll take a moment to take a look at all of these explorers just to see how similar they are and how easy they are to leverage. Uh, to start off, this is our Exchange Explorer. The Exchange Explorer allows you to see your organization and then all of the users that you're backing up from that organization, whether it's their inbox or the conversational history, which contains their team's conversations and data, and the advanced search options, which contain over a hundred different fields for to be able to specify exact conditions for data that you need to export. And even when it comes to SharePoint Online, uh, we're able to see not only our users and our personal sites, but we're able to see our team's sites, which allow us to restore any type of team's uh, contents and documents that were sent within general channels in OneDrive for Business, which is where we just lost our data. You don't have to restore this entire file if you don't need to, but in this case, we're going to, and you can do either a keep, which will keep a copy of that file, or an overwrite. Since we know that data is gone and we're no longer able to access it, we'll go ahead and do an overwrite option here and making sure I get that password in. And just moments for it to connect up to the object storage, because this data is out in the cloud right now to try to restore back to this local environment. And we can see already our data starting to come back down from the Office 365. We can check these folders. They're starting to receive back their modify dates so that uh, we have that data we need. And let's see if we can find that performance improvement, which we're now able to not only open up in the cloud, but back on our environment. And it's that easy to get your data back when disaster strikes. Excellent stuff, Corinne. Did we have a couple Great. of questions? I think that? we do. Yeah, uh, well, we've got a few extra questions that have trickled in here. Uh, so any, uh, I'm not sure if we answered this one, any user backup size limits? Did we all answer that one? Yeah, there's no yep. limits for the backup size of that user. Okay. Um, are Exchange public folders covered with backups? Yes. Okay. Um, if I want to back up only one site collection, in that case, will only one license work? I, yes. I believe that, yeah, yeah, that is the Whenever case. Whenever you get a license, it covers all uh, components for that user. So if you do just want to back up their site, it's only that one license, but you could also back up their OneDrive email and everything else for that one license. Right, that does that does the whole the whole gamut. Um, does the Azure Backup Proxy have to be on-premise or can it be stored within Veeam Cloud? So you can actually fully deploy in the Azure Marketplace and we have, if you go search in the Azure Marketplace, a Veeam Backup uh, for Microsoft Office 365 application, you can deploy that, deploy your proxies up there. But I do recommend if you're going to be using an Azure proxy, go ahead and tap into the blob storage because it's going to be a more efficient backup. You want your proxies to be a database level connection of the disk. So you'll want to do that ultra tier for your disk and then using a blob storage to kind of keep that disk at a smaller size to have the most cost efficient to performance backups. Okay, great. Um, our favorite question here, Corinne, has appeared. Um, does it back up Teams conversations and files shared within Teams? Thanks for that question, Brian. Yeah, it's mostly an educational piece uh, knowing where your Teams data is. Because Teams is a front-end application interface for their three back-end software pieces, which is Exchange, OneDrive, and SharePoint Online. 
So conversations between two people would happen within the Exchange side interface, meaning under each of those folders, they have a conversational record of that history. If you send a document to another user, that actually gets transferred through OneDrive. And then when we're looking at collaborative team sites for uh, users, then you're looking at the SharePoint Online and document libraries through SharePoint Online, meaning all of that backend data is still there. There just are no import APIs to directly inject conversations back into the Teams interface at this time, but you're able to recover any of that content data that you need from those different sectors. Okay, we have one, can the data be restored to a different location? I, I think we did cover that, but um, yeah, there's a variety of different ways to deploy and um, uh, certainly we encourage uh, you, know, you to deploy in Azure, in the Azure Marketplace, um, leverage Azure Blob, um, or even you can back it up, uh, back the data up on premises too. Um, are there egress data charges from O365? No, actually, Office 365, to be able to back up data from Office 365, there are no egress charges and there's no charge to restore data to Office 365, but if you're using any type of blob or object storage, those charges still apply for any types of transactions and data moving. Right, okay. Can you take incremental backups or are they all full? You start off with a full backup and then it's an incremental forever forward. Okay, great. Well, I think with that, we can uh, go into some takeaways here. I know we have a few questions we can answer at the very end, but uh, um, first off, um, if, if you are really interested in, in pursuing a backup, but maybe you need to be uh, further convinced or maybe you need uh, a little more guidance as you explore in this market, um, we do have this Office 365 backup for dummies ebook uh, that we worked on with Wiley Publishing, and uh, it does provide a comprehensive guide to kind of help you navigate within this, this, new, this new market. So um, if you're still new to this, you need to learn more, maybe to convince a peer. Um, please leverage this this ebook as kind of your survival guide uh, to navigate through through this market. So you can get the link there. You can also Google Office 365 Backup for Dummies, and you will find it as well. Um, and of course, see for yourself, right? So uh, we do offer a free uh, free trial, no limitations. So the full product free for 30 days. And again, I think we did mention that there is a community edition. Um, if you have uh, a very small organization that uh, only has just a handful of users, you can also just use the community edition up to 10 users completely free. So um, you can follow the link there as well. And I think we're going to hand, uh, hand the slide back to Bytes and we're going to uh, wrap up here with uh, uh, the rest of the questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much, guys. Um, yeah, so if you could, if you have any questions, do pop them in the questions box um, and we'll get those answered for you. I've got, we've got a couple here. Um, is Veeam, Veeam Backup and Replication and Veeam Backup for Office 365 the same console? Sure, I can, I can take that one. So um, Veeam Backup and Replication, many of you may know our flagship product, Veeam Backup and Replication. Uh, that's actually a, a completely separate product from uh, Veeam Backup for Office 365, uh, VBO is actually a standalone solution. So uh, we specifically designed this uh, for a specific use case, O365, and uh, for the for the time being, um, it is a separate separate console. So um, you can deploy that completely separately if you are an existing Veeam customer. Perfect, thank you. The next one here is talking about, oh, is it better to have a virtual machine or is a physical machine better? That's a great question, but it really doesn't matter. Our software is very uh, versatile, meaning that you could have it as a virtual machine, you can have it as a physical machine, you could have it as a cloud-only machine having a completely CapEx type of uh, infrastructure charging, it's not going to matter as long as you give it the resources that it needs according to its user ad specs. Brilliant. And um, why should I have a backup when I can use litigation hold? 
You know, that's a great question. And I, I think that goes back to when we were discussing the E3 and E5 licenses, right? So again, uh, many of you may have E3, E5 licenses. They include things like litigation hold, which that has, that has a, a purpose, right? And that's a very cool feature. Uh, during litigation proceedings, you can ultimately freeze that data um, you know, so that, uh, so that you can, you can follow the best legal practices when it comes to that. But ultimately freezing data is not the same as having a backup, right? So what we define as a backup, um, is ultimately, um, backing up separate from the source, right? Um, having a backup separate from the source, uh, with the correct RTOs, RPOs that you require, uh, in order to keep the business up and running. So ultimately, um, you know, the recycle bin, things like that, the the safeguards that that Microsoft puts in place, and the the cool uh, different features that come with certain licenses, these all do not equate to a backup, folks. Uh, so hopefully, um, you know, if you do have those higher licenses, you still can see that there is a need um, for a backup. Brilliant, thanks so much, Edward. So I will just wait a minute or so uh, just to see if any more questions come in, but. Um, while we're waiting for that, I will just say as well, thank you very much to everyone who, who's presented today. Um, I hope everyone's found it really informative. And um, yeah, you can forward any questions as well if you think of them outside of the webinar to tell me more at bytes.co.uk. Alternatively, you can request a call back in the short survey, which will pop up when you exit the webinar. So if there's thank no more us. questions. I that's quite all right thank you so much um so i think we'll leave it there for today but yeah uh, do get in touch if you can think of anything else great thank, thank you. you very much everyone